thank you both so much for doing this. Uh, this podcast is all about you and your journey in music and uh, how you guys got to where you are now. I know there's quite a bit, uh, some controversy in there for a minute and you have a new record out, which is awesome. So I really want to talk about that as well. If that's yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. So you're husband and wife, correct? Yep. Yep. Okay. That's awesome. We'll, we'll talk about how you met, if that's cool. And well, are you both from the same area? Are you both from? No, I mean, we're both from Western Canada, but she's from the coast and I'm from the prairies. Okay, Jason, where, you, where were you born and raised? I was born in Regina. Okay. Saskatchewan. And Olga was born in... Kelowna, BC. Kelowna, BC. Okay. And how did yeah. you guys get into music? Well, I... I like, we, uh, we met in Vancouver. I went to uh, art school there. There's an art school there called Emily Carr. And so I was living in Vancouver, going to art school there. And, and that's how we met. Um, but I mean, Augie had been playing music probably long. Yeah, I was, yeah, I've been playing in bands, uh, from the time of like from 1990 until, yeah. And then we basically, I was in Vancouver for until like, uh, 98, I think. And, uh, I'd been playing in bands there and, uh, yeah, basically we just met. He came to one of my shows from the previous band, and uh, and we uh, yeah. And I thought she looked pretty good up there playing bass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I had been I I was at, I was in art school, but I I basically went to art school to become a better musician because all uh, of my musical idols at that time had gone to art school, so I just thought it was one of these rites of passages. <laughs> and it was also I was also trying to stall because I wanted to make music for a living, but I didn't hadn't quite figured out exactly what I was going to do or kind of we were sort of toying around, you know, Augie and I. So when we were recording, we were listening to a lot of post rock and like the thrill jockey, early thrill jockey era, like Tortoise and Sea and Cake and all that stuff was happening. Mm-hmm. So we were sort of sifting through all that, trying to figure out what we were going to do, what we were going to be. And, uh, you know, I, I had already been making music. I started playing guitar when I was 15. So I was, you know, I had a four track in my house in Regina. And so I was making record, you know, making songs and, you know, making little albums and stuff, you know, just for myself, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Did you when play I any bands to, prior to, prior to that, like when you're 15 or is it mainly just like a bedroom recording the four track? Yeah. Thing? I mean, I did play in, in bands when I, when I was a kid, you know, my first band was a punk rock band. Uh, we, uh, we were the, uh, the bass, the guitar player is now has been in propaganda uh, for oh, years. Wow. Yeah. Uh, oh, Todd man. Kowalski. He was the, he's, he was the, he, him and I were, it was the first band I was ever in was, was with Todd. Wow. Yeah. So, so that was because Todd grew up in Regina. He was, he was a North Ender like me. <laughs> there was a dude me. Yeah. We were both, I was a skater kid and he was like, he was a, he was a punk kid. He, he taught me, you know, he was pretty, he was pretty hardcore at that time. And, and uh, he, I was just this, I, he just that was looking for a singer. And so I started, I was singing in that, in that band. And then after that, I started playing guitar more full time and then kind of started playing in, you know, various, you know, small things throughout, but not, nothing that ever got anywhere, put out records or anything like that. But mm-hmm. then once I moved to, to Vancouver in 97, met Augie in 90, well, I moved to Vancouver in 95. I think no 97 met Augie and shortly after that 98 ish yep. 99 yeah and then uh we got married in 2000 and we're, we're trying to figure out we knew we wanted to make music we knew we wanted to start a studio as well because we wanted to do it all ourselves and I had been recording for a long time so uh we looked at the map to see where we could go and Chicago was an idea. We were going to maybe move there because of all the music we loved was coming out of there. Sure. And Montreal was an option too, because we had seen like the constellation stuff. It was probably uh, like Godspeed and fly Pan Am and like all those records were starting to come out and do really well. And uh, Montreal was becoming known quite early on in those days as, you know, an international, you know, mecca for 
strange music, experimental music, which we thought was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So it was super cheap at that time to move out here. So we just did. And we've been here ever since. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you guys met, you, you went to one of her shows and, and Olga, how'd you get into music originally? Um, well, when I moved, I moved to Vancouver in uh, uh, 1989, 88, 89. Um, and I had, I moved with a bunch of friends and we, uh, we all shared a place together. And there was a band that was going to be formed, but they needed a bass player. <laughs> so Classic. I took it upon my, yeah, I know, right? It's always the bass player. <laughs> So I, which was fine with me because at the time I was loving the Pixies and Sonic mm -hmm. Youth and I, I was just like, yeah, ladies, you know, so I uh, picked up the instrument and started just learning my bass, learning bass lines to my favorite songs. And, uh, and yeah, I just basically like from the, from day one, I've been in a band situation, uh, even as I was learning how to play the instrument. So interesting. It was, yeah, it was a pretty awesome and it was a great time too. It was like, that was at the time when like, uh, like Nirvana were big. Like I saw Nirvana four times in Vegas. Whoa, that's crazy. And, uh, yeah, there, it, it, you know, it was just, it was the time for live music. It was incredible. And I was really in the right, right, right place. At, yeah. You know, like, you know, Seattle was getting huge and all the bands coming out of there and all ages shows I got to go see. And yeah, it was, you know, very thankful for that time total opposite for me <laughs> yeah I mean, growing up in growing up in the prairies man it's like all we got i mean we got some cool stuff but it was all like you know like hard, hard working punk rock bands like this like all uh uh early i saw green day uh like five to four to four or five times you know like doughboys uh chemical people uh snfu beyond possession <laughs> like all these you know early punk rock bands but we never got as i got older and got interested in like you know the the stuff that was cool that was happening like tortoise wouldn't come stereo lab wouldn't come mm -hmm. uh, spirits were spiritualized like all those bands that i was really excited about as soon as i moved to vancouver Augie was like, oh yeah, you know, we go see these bands, like yeah, whatever. See them like 30 them. times. Yeah, yeah see no them already. Yeah, so, oh, you want Stereo Lab's coming? Do you want, oh, I guess I'll go see them again. You know, I'm just like, oh my God, Stereo Lab's coming. You know? Okay, I guess I'll go see my bloody Valentine. It's like, oh, I'll okay, well, I saw them already. I saw them in 90, you know, right. and they were at their prime. You know, and, uh, <laughs> geez, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, funny. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, and that, I mean, that, like I said, it was just, I, it, I was really fortunate at the time. And, uh, you know, that was just, that was my, my learning curve was just having all these, you know, bands coming there and seeing them play and, and, and just being in bands myself. And I think that gave her a really good sense of uh, ear training too, because she's, that's what she's really, that's yeah really I'm not good a at is classically trained musician. She can pick up bass lines. I'm pretty super fast I've got a you know pretty good and I think that's because of being on the spot for all those years like say okay play this play this you know and sure. learning that way yeah, yeah. I remember wow. there was this sorry go ahead. no I was let go ahead I'm sorry you know, I didn't <laughs> cut you off this, uh there was this one time when I, the, the band I was playing in there was we were in a rehearsal space and uh it, it was right right when uh when Metallica's uh uh whatchamacallit uh, and justice for all no 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 the, <laughs> master the, of puppets the big hit the big hit black album. black album yes exactly when it came out and it, uh enter sandman enter sandman Fuck, sorry I, um but yeah that was the song that uh everyone was like really into at the time and i remember we were sitting there figuring it out and you, i figured out that bass line i was just like holy fuck this is so heavy so we started jamming it we stopped for a bit we're listening around all the other bands in the, in the rehearsal space. We're, we're playing, playing it too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. 
<laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> it was the song that every band in the same uh, rehearsal area needed to learn at that time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they just had to get it out of their it was system. It was the 90s version of Smoke on the Water, I guess. <laughs> right, again, yeah. <laughs> it was or the Iron song Man. like yeah. listed on, when you go into the guitar shop, it's like, you're not allowed to play. Like, you yeah, know, exactly. you got, yeah. it's like, no <laughs> stairway to headwind, yeah. no headwind. <laughs> Okay. No inner Sandman, no smoke on the water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So you guys yeah. met. Uh, so was it more? I don't know. Did, did it start as a love interest and then uh, progress into a into a musical collaboration? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we we were making music pretty quickly after we met, but it, the, there was there was definitely a love interest there for sure. You there know? was, but I mean, there was also no doubt that like you know we had to have the ke uh, chemistry to make the music together. So if that was missing, then it probably would have been game Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had been in a bunch of relationships, you know, and Augie had two. And I, I mean, I, I don't know about her, but at that time I was, uh, uh, I had been uh, single for about, I don't know, almost a year. And I was at that point where I was going to be no compromise. Like I, I was sick of meeting people who weren't sort of on the same kind of plane as I was like sure. understanding of what, like I, I knew what I wanted to do and, and I needed to meet someone who was also interested in doing the same thing. Cause I knew it was going to be a, a, a tough go and we might fail and so right. there wasn't really going to be a lot of money in our lives. And, you know, but, uh, you know, Augie was like, yeah, she, you know, we, we had that conversation pretty early on. I was just like, look, like if we're going to, if we're going to have a relationship, we should, I should be honest with you. You know, it's like, yeah. I want to, I want to do this and this is my plan. And she was like, well, I want to do this and this is my plan. <laughs> so I was so like, there, okay, yeah. <laughs> so let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> then the best nerd lakes were, were formed at that, or did you guys have a different, yeah kind of i mean we sort of started making a few of the songs that we started working up working on in our apartment in vancouver together actually ended up being besnard songs they were very sort of different but the you know the the embryonic versions of those songs like land of living skies yeah like uh light up the night those songs were Casino Nanaimo. Uh, those songs were already in their in 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 their embryonic form. Those were kind of some of the things that we wrote while we were uh, while we were in Vancouver. And then we did move back to save some money. We moved back to Regina for a year, and we had a version of the band called Besnard Lake, and we were uh, we were a post rock band. So a lot of those riffs that we were that turned into what came later uh we were like a sitting down in chairs uh like uh two guitar player uh me and me and my buddy mike and uh we had a, a saxophone every once in a while bass, <laughs> and then augie was on bass with drums my friend darcy on drums uh and leon who's since passed away we, so we had three guitars and our songs were like 10 minutes, 15 minutes long, you know, a la tortoise. And, you know, we're trying to make these long sort of sure. expansive things, you know. And then when, so we had that together for a year. And then we moved, when we moved in 2000 to Montreal, packed up everything, saved some money, drove out to Montreal. Uh, the band that we had kind of formed here sort of fell apart. And then in, so in 2003, Augie and I had kind of put the studio together, the far first version of the studio. And we decided, you know what? Screw it. We don't need a band. We have, let's just, we have a studio. Let's just make a record and see what happens. And so we made volume one, just the two of us. Oh, with me that... playing drums and Augie playing drums. Interesting. So whole... I didn't know that whole record was just the two of you. Yeah, it's just me and her. Yeah. So, so then we kind of realized that that was kind of a fun way to do things. And so it, it sort of, it's kind of carried on like that. A lot of, a lot of the, the when we, when we're writing now, uh, they, the, the songs will get formed 
with just Augie and I kind of sorting them out and figuring out the rearrangements and mm -hmm. playing. We will even do some drums and 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 then uh, and then we'll take it to the band and have them, you know, finish add. finish up and add their yeah. flourishes and you know actually have Kevin play drums because he's a real drummer and <laughs> we're you know we're okay drummers but we're not like Kevin you know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's interesting. Uh, well, so after you put out that first record, volume one, it was still the two of you. When did you gain the rest of the band? And when did uh, Are the Dark Horse, when did that like record, like, was that form, was that another record that's just the both of you on? Or is that how yeah, you do it? All your albums? Or yeah, tell me about that a little of, bit. Yeah. I mean, like, I guess disasters, me. Yeah. I don't know that there's anybody else uh, aside from the string or string stuff. Yeah, I think it's just me me doing that whole like the drums and the and everything, mm -hmm. the, even the bass. But I mean, a lot of it is. Uh, uh, I mean, when 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 Dark Horse we started doing Dark Horse, we had some. We would have some of the members at the time, like when we did. So when we did Volume One, we put a band together, and I was mm -hmm. re actually recording Kevin at the time. Uh, for one of his projects and I, okay. I we got along quite well and so I just asked him if he wanted to join the band and then we found a, a, a um, a, oh but that was even after yeah. Our, even volume one had uh, another another drummer and another guitar player that we had met early and we did a tour across Canada then they went back to their other band and then we got then I found Kevin mm -hmm. And then Kevin came along, and then we found a guitar player, and his his girlfriend was uh, the string arranger, so we had them mm -hmm. for for dark for dark horse. Yeah. And then uh, they left, and then in Roaring Night we had Rich, and but Kevin's been the constant throughout yeah. the whole thing. Okay. So I mean, it's kind of how it works. Is Augie and I put the albums. To the arrangements and everything together do most of the overdubbing and stuff and then when then we take it into the studio and like i said you know then we start whoever's in the band at the time <laughs> will add their you know be like here's you know because i'm not i'm not i love guitar solos but i'm not really a great guitar solo person uh -huh. so i will get you know the people to you know the the, the guitar players that we have to like you know play a solo it's like we have a Spice bunch of friends a bit. who are amazing yeah <laughs> To spice it up a bit sometimes we run out of ideas and get them to come in and put some things you know sheena can add some amazing keyboards to things if we can't figure it out and so but that's kind of how it works so yeah it looks like you you guys would put a record out and then you know make tour it do that and then about, there's about a three-year gap in between every album from yeah. 2017 all the way up to the 2016 record and then that's when you, I know like stuff kind of got into some turmoil there with the label, right? Is, I don't know if you yeah. feel comfortable talking about that. Or like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. no, I mean, I mean, w once we put, we put out Coliseum Complex Museum in 2015 uh -huh. and that was, that was the last record we did with Jag Jaguar. Uh -huh. uh, we kind of, they, I mean, they put out an EP after that. We, we, the writing was kind of on the wall, on the wall for us. Like we're still very close with them. And uh -huh. I mean, Darius, one of the owners was kind of like a father figure to us. He, he treated us so well and we were pretty green when we started the, you know, working in the music industry. And we were also very skeptical and like, uh, um, you know, we kind of had this, you know, punk rock attitude towards things and we wanted to make sure that nobody was screwing us over and everybody was being sure. honest with us and we were also very curious to learn the whole process like what everything how everything worked in the music industry and Darius was very forthcoming with being transparent allowing us to to you know to learn these things and and he would sit on the phone with us and feel safe yeah. feel safe yeah and I never pushed us to make records and so I mean they were the best label to be on at that time for us. I mean, I, I don't, I can't imagine hearing some of the horror stories of people with other labels. I just can't imagine, you know, mm -hmm. being in, in the, that position, we just wouldn't have been able to deal with it. But I mean, the time, the time came, we weren't one of the bigger selling uh, uh, bands on their label at that point. Uh, and I mean, Jag at that point had become quite 
big, you know, they had a lot of employees and they were, you know, putting out some pretty big records at, at and they still do. And we kind of knew we were all, we were always surprised that they were still interested in still, <laughs> still having us anyway, you know? Sure. So we, we had that talk and, you know, they, I, I was, I, I could, I knew it was really hard for them, but I knew mm -hmm. they had to do it. It was a business decision and I understand that. I mean, I also run a business. I know what it's like. I run a home studio. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, we parted ways with them and I mean, it was tough. We were thinking that maybe we weren't going to continue on. We thought that maybe the writing was on the wall for us too, as a band, you know, we were older music's for young people. We didn't know if we had anything <laughs> yet left to say, you know, and so we sat on it for a while. And then, I don't know, we kind of realized, you know, going back to, you know, the early days with us, it's like one of the reasons why we, you know, got together is because we wanted to make music our for our lives. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, it's one of the things that we love to do together. So we started making writing again and not knowing where it would go or what it would do, but we had a bunch of stuff lying around. So we started just writing songs, picking up songs that were hadn't been finished and made an effort to try to, the stuff that had been in the vault that we kind of hadn't really had a chance to finish. We were on no time limit. I mean, we never were with Jag, but we always knew we should probably get a record out at some point. <laughs> so, but I mean, with this, we didn't, we didn't have a time limit so we took our time and and finally put something together and then what ended up happening is when we finished the record uh and then full-time hobby came along and then fat cat in the usa came along and then mm -hmm. flemish eye in canada came along and they were all super interested in putting the record out and it finally felt like these three labels like because they were so excited to put the record out i feel like it gave us a whole new rebirth i feel like with jag we had kind of exhausted we were kind of like an old couple you know taking advantage of each other they're always doing the same sort of you know rollouts you know that we had done for years and we didn't know any different so we weren't pushing and you know we we just but with this with the with the new labels they were just every everything was just it, a super like pure excitement you know and they got they were able to move it into channels that we weren't able to get to before and well, kind of lit a fire under our asses too. it did yeah like they because they're you know when you've got three labels that are communicating and they you know they want a little bit you know they ask for more they you know for from us and it's like i you know, basically took over the social media and which like, we were terrible into, at. Yeah, like you know, we were. Which is a job like, in itself, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. It really is. Like, oh yeah, my and God. we hate. Like I hate yeah, it. I, I self promotion is yeah. not for you know, like the, it's not for the squeamish. You know? <laughs> no, I feel you on that one. I'm terrible. I'm just like I feel so weird. Like yeah, boasting yeah. about myself. It's just yeah. like not my thing. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, but Augie, you know, bless her, she took up the task and. <laughs> but you know it's i think it, it's helped you know like we, we, regardless of our punk rock attitude or whatever music is is we uh, we we want it to be out to the masses and we want as many people to hear it as possible that's obvious you know yeah so some of those you know it's and those are necessary evils i mean in this in this time that you know you need to be able to get on social media to get the point across because that's where everybody is that's where mm -hmm. everybody's paying attention you know? sure so yeah. Well, with this new record, you, I mean, you guys, uh, you parted ways with the label and now you have this new interest and were, was, did the interest start around the new record? Yes, we okay. finished, the record was completed and mastered and then we started sending it out to people. And, and when was, was that? I'm just curious where the pandemic falls on <laughs> with all of Right this. in the middle of it. Well, <laughs> okay. It was, basically, yeah, it, it was completed just right before it It was completed hit, three like months, March. three months before we went into lockdown. So it was completed okay. in January and the first lockdown happened in March. March, We yeah. were negotiating contracts in like April, May. Uh, right in the middle of the, uh, and everybody at that point, we didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. And and all the labels were just saying, well, you know, we'll release it in January, and and we were like, well, and then we'll go on tour, 
right and it's like okay yeah it's like no <laughs> 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 right oh. but nobody knew at the time i mean we finished we finished the record we had it mastered we knew it was over an hour long which we had never uh we had never put that burden on Jag Jaguar because we always wanted to keep our manufacturing costs, you know, reasonable. But mm -hmm. for this, we were like, you know what, this is what the record is. This is what we want it to be. We want it to feel like a continuous sequence. This is how it feels the best. Uh, we want to have all these long drones in there because it's the heart of what we've always tried to be. And, all, and we've always had to curb it, you know, just to kind of keep, cost down and we were like this is going to be a no compromise thing so if labels are interested this is what it has to be and uh, you know it has to be a double vinyl that's expensive oh yeah so for them to be on board you know we wanted it to be double gatefold too because the artwork was important to what it was uh, -huh. uh and they agreed to all of it and we that just that in itself blew my blew my mind because us being uh old and not interest not interesting to anybody anymore you know and then having this expensive well, that, record but... yeah well you know and have this expensive record be made you know uh, on our behalf is like it was pretty awesome we didn't think this record was even going to ever see the light of day so yeah. for it to to come out and for it to actually see uh, it got a lot of great press and a lot of people were talking about it. It really rejuvenated us in, uh -huh. in a sense. Um, I mean, we're super grateful. It couldn't have rolled out better. You know, even in the pandemic, mm -hmm. it, I can't, we were kind of really wishing we could tour, but we will, it'll happen, you know. Uh, sooner than later, it looks like. Sooner hopefully. than later. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. There's a light, there's big festivals being scheduled. So yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if they're willing to get, I don't know how, I don't know if they're doing some restrictions, but like outside lands and those festivals are like close to a hundred thousand people. I mean, yeah, it's not like, exactly. It's not yeah. like a 1500 seat, you know, theater. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so COVID better be pretty wrapped up by then. Yeah, yeah hopefully. Yeah, we yeah. shall see. <laughs> but I think it like you, to your point, like not, not really, um, you know, just telling them the label, like, Hey, th this is the record. We're going to put it out this way, no matter what. I mean, you have a, the title track to the album is seven, like 17 minutes long, almost 18 minutes long. I mean, that's yeah. a pretty bold move. <laughs> 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 right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And you're like, yeah, we're going to put is. this on vinyl. That must be just one side of the, 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 well, second the, the, half. the, cool, the cool thing about that is, uh, on this, on the CD, it's 18 minutes long. On the vinyl, it's endless because we put an endless groove in the end of the, uh, after the song ends. So it does the drone at the end of the song for a while, and then it slips in, the needle slips into a, a, an endless groove in the center hole, and it goes on forever. Oh my gosh, the that's needle. the most creative thing I've ever heard. Has so, any other band ever done that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got we got the idea from other bands who have done it before. I mean, it was a big post rock thing too. A lot of bands would kind of end yeah. with it and have this like you know feedback thing that would slip into the groove. But we've had a few oh a few fans have actually commented, "Did you do this on purpose?" Because I fell asleep listening to the record, which a lot of people do. <laughs> Which is a good thing, you know, which is a good thing, which, you know, it's a relaxing record, you know, Sure. Uh, and, the, and they would wake up at like four in the morning, so you know, because maybe they playing. were high or something, you know, yeah, who sure. knows what they were doing, you know, and the, and the record's still droning, right. it's still going on, and they're like, this is, was the most existential ethereal experience i have i've had in a really long time and they're thanking us for this did you do this on purpose and we're like writing them back going yes this is exactly how we wanted people to experience it <laughs> that is so amazing that i, I i'm a vinyl collector you can't tell from all the stuff in my room but um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> i have a i have a massive vinyl collection i've never i've Maybe one of my records does that. And I just pulled the needle off before. I mean, just when it, thinking the song. Yeah, maybe. Because oh, hearing, yeah. like knowing the song off of just like listening to it on digitally because it's accessible that way. Yeah. And yeah. then just pulling the needle off. I'm I'm curious now because I like I said I've never heard that. We have uh, a fan. We have a fan who 
stumbled upon it by accident. He was listening to the record with his nine-year-old kid. And they, at one point, they have a, they, they have a place with a, you know, like with a wood stove and like no TV kind of thing, where they got oh, this wow. awesome record, record player. And so they are listening to the record and, and they listen to this, this drone for like another hour. And apparently now the, the his kid will request to put just the, the drone, drone on. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, they sit there and listen to the drone for like an hour, which is so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. That's so creative. Again, I've never, uh, I've never heard this before. This is like, it blows my mind. Cause I was like, huh, they did a double vinyl. That's an 18 minute song that you must have to flip the record in between. <laughs> like, nope. Nope. Yeah, it yeah. just goes on and now on and we can on. Say we made a, a record that goes on for infinity. Yeah. Timeless. I mean, that's the cool thing about the, mecha- <laughs> the that's the cool thing about the mechanics of vinyl, which you can't do on a CD is once that needle locks itself into a groove, it'll just follow the groove. So, right. I mean, it can be, it's a, the, 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 the pressing plant said to us that it's always a bit of a risk because some when they're actually cutting the vinyl, sometimes they don't get it right. So oh. they have, to, so they want to, it was, it's always a bit of a risk and sometimes it doesn't work. So we were kind of, it's one of those things where you kind of got to cross your fingers and hope that it's going to, that it, it, when we that got the lands, pressing. Yeah, but I've yeah, had pressings that even to this day that I'll get and the, it'll skip. like randomly mm-hmm. like there's like one little groove that's messed up and it'll kind of jump and i'm like oh well and then i'll go back try to play it again and then it's just something with that vinyl and it's like do i really want to ship it back and then like at that point it's like maybe this is kind of something unique about the this one album that i own but well that's it yeah the little yeah. easter eggs you know right like, that's what we love <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Well, thank you both so much for hanging out with me today. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks for oh, having yeah. us. That was fun. Yeah. yeah. Great. I have one more question for both of you. Um, I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Well, I always say, I don't know if this is good advice or not, but I always say uh, just, and this is cliche, but it's kind of worked for me. Uh, don't stop doing it and always be available for everything and and have but have yourself be smart have yourself a really awesome uh, backup plan job that isn't nine to five and you can be your own boss I love then that. you can just be make music you know I, I I got lucky I was I was a music I was a musician and then I, I became a music producer too so I also make 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 other people's records for people mm-hmm. so that's kind of my main job and then it allows me to to do Besnard and so I can still take you know I, when I when Besnard tours it kind of feels like a vacation to me because I'm working in the studio all the time so that was my backup plan. They were both two risky plans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but at least it was, but, but neither of them were nine to five jobs. That's it. Right. And I'm, that's and all that's that matters. Big, that's the hardest thing about being a musician is, is trying to find enough money and juggling that thing. So if you're able to be like a graphic designer or like a person who makes videos for people or, you know, makes, t- you know, video, video editor or whatever, and all those kinds of things, you know, a recording engineer, you know, yeah. all those stuff that allows you to be your own boss. That's, that's what you got to do. I love that. Yeah. Just, <laughs> and my own pride. Uh, the, the one thing I say is like, I've, my mom would always tell me like, you need to, you're going to grow up and, you know, something about wearing a suit or whatever. I'm almost 40. I'm 36 years old and I still don't know how to tie a tie. And I'm, that's one of my <laughs> claim to fame. <laughs> so, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I've yet to learn. But anyway, Olga, do you have any advice for aspiring artists? I mean, pretty much the same way. It's, it's, and I mean, like for me from the very beginning, it's always been the total DIY ethic. It's like do it yourself own your own means of production yeah. and that's learn how, it all just learn it all yeah. learn everything that you can about it it's like yeah it, it's tiresome and a little bit onerous for some things it's like you know like I, even to this day i'm just like oh my god i hate doing the taxes but it's like but i'm going to do them because i learned i've learned how to do them and it doesn't scare me anymore yeah it's like just try it 
delve into every aspect of it. Yeah, you, you know, you know, like we capable. are even with volume one, we 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 manufactured our own, like we went to the manufacturing plant. We didn't have a label. All of that, all we we did all the we had all the printing done. We we mass produced it. Like we knew how all that worked by the time that was done. And then when Darius came along with Jag Jaguar. We learned how publishing works and how contracts work, and we can kind of read our own contracts now. And those things are super important, I think. To you, you should know all, the whole music industry because it's a bit complicated. If you find someone who can help you, figure it out. Yeah. <laughs>